have been forcibly taken away from them under the protective veil of the law. If today we are to speak of an emancipatory revolutionary politics, even a minimalist program cannot proceed with the neglect of the commons. The basic principles of anti-enclosure, neighborhood, safe passage, subsistence, and reparations, mutual aid, justice, hospitality, fellowship, and trust are elements of a program of the commons that seeks to nourish, both literally and metaphorically, the human community. Today, more than ever, we need to steer our theoretical and practical revolutionary efforts in the direction of commoning. In recent debates on the left communist intellectual circles, and here I have in mind the debates between Gilles Dauvé and Théorie Communiste, it is possible to find the basic idea of commoning as a constituent part of this new conception of revolution, what they call revolution as communization. Accordingly, we must reject being reduced to a negative horizon of emancipation, of waiting until after the revolution in order to transition into communism, which then exhibits itself as the collective ownership of the means of production. This, while a lofty, while a lofty goal in and of itself, falls short of abolishing a regime that remains fundamentally capitalist in content. True. Ownership changes hands, but the commodity form and wage labor remain intact. In order to conceive of a regime that also abolishes ownership, not by collectivizing, but rather by commoning, we need to return to one of Marx's early definitions of communism, namely, communism as the real movement which abolishes the present state of things. But we also need to complement this definition with the plenitude of our practices of sociality. Hence, revolution should be understood as a movement which, while dissolving capitalist social relations in their content, simultaneously and immediately proceeds with the production of communism. This is not simply the democratization of the agency of revolution, based on a critique of the Leninist party and its replacement with councils, Soviets, and other direct and non-representative participatory forms. Rather, or at the same time, it involves an immediacy, an urgency, of initiating the self-transformation of proletarians into commoners. Such a transformation cannot only be achieved at the workplace or in political struggle. Only through revolution conceived as communization or commoning can we avoid repeating the mistakes of the past and reassert, reassert the important goal of abolishing labor and not just the exploitation of labor alongside the abolition of capital and the state. What such current debates on the left suggest to us as strategies for the self-abolition of the proletariat as a class are methods such as absenteeism, work stoppage, and the refusal of work itself, all of which can be thought of as modern forms of exodus. But as important, I think, is the transformation of everyday life in order to create our own life worlds in common. We need to envision commensality as a form of resistance, a form of communization, that allows us to take charge and organize our own lives according to principles that do not conform to the production and reproduction of commodities and our labor power as a commodity. Morris Bloch argues, in all societies, sharing food is a way of establishing closeness, while conversely, the refusal to share is one of the clearest marks of distance and enmity." End of quote. Eating and drinking together constitute the embodiment of closeness, a shared life, and friendship. Eating together eliminates hierarchy, lessens social distance, and builds amicable relations across gender, sexual, class, ethnic, religious, and racial lines. It fosters a sense of care for the other, the know-how of management and use of the commons. It eliminates a sense of possessiveness and self-interested behavior. 
It helps cultivate communicative and deliberative skills while also teaching fundamental civic values such as giving, sharing, and a communal ethic around food. Eating together inculcates and invites further practices of socialization. By commoning, by insisting on our commensal practices, we take back the creative capacity that we engender in our everyday lives and formulate new webs of human relationships that do not reify different parts of our lives as private and public, as social and political, as mere bestial life and human life. Capitalism has colonized our social and political spaces, but we insist on creating new ones. From the recurrent, monotonous, vanishing activity of nourishment, we no longer feed capital, but our own solidarity. We build ties that do not require us to share the same identity. The dream of a land flowing with milk and honey that we harbor while sharing our bread around the same table may be illusory, but it is much better, in any case, than eating alone. Thank you.